Minecraft 1.20 already has so many brand new features that are designed for self-expression or creativity. Some of this is definitely intentional, like making brand new block patterns, uh, some of which are beautiful, some of which are a bit horrifying, but some of this was definitely not intended, like these weird new trees or structures or whatever the heck this is, to be totally honest with you. Hello, I'm Abyx Toycan, and today I'm going to be playing around with the new 1.20 features in ways that probably weren't meant to be played around with, because that's the sort of thing I like to do with Minecraft updates just for a bit of fun. And today I'm going to start by mentioning that greater than 99% of house fires happen to be blue aren't subscribed to the IBX Toycat YouTube channel. You can do with that information what you will as we jump into the first thing here. By the way, aren't rafts great for doing little, little parkour courses? You probably already know this by now, but just in case you don't, there is a brand new type of wood in this update and it's the weirdest type because you don't find it out in the wild. It is the first type of log that you craft yourself. It's actually just called the block of bamboo, but it functions as the bamboo log. You can take this block of bamboo and you can craft it into bamboo planks. And why is that interesting? Well, it means we have a brand new log style block that doesn't generate naturally anywhere in the world. This is a real shame if you ask me, and it's something we can fix using the power of, you guessed it, the magical fill command that, wow, look at that. Do you, do you like these jungle trees? I think they sure are looking good as bamboo blocks. <laughs> I think, uh, honestly, it's a little bit horrific in some places. Maybe if we just shave it first. Yeah, I think that I think that gives us a little bit of a better look. I think yellow is a nicer vibe than green. But right now, we've got some very ugly trees, but that's just because they're spruce. Okay, so here is me doing the exact same in a birch forest. Honestly, I think this is a much better fit. Something about these trees being beautifully green just kind of works as far as I'm concerned. But I think the big question is would, you know, bamboo, which currently is this big, weird, sticky thing, would bamboo look better as bamboo blocks? The answer is almost certainly not. However, the point of this channel is not to ask whether we should, but instead just to jump right in there and do it anyway. So here are a bunch of bamboo blocks and if we just uh, go right in there, do the exact same command, but we'll replace uh, the bamboo that's there instead, then it looks like... <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> I really should have seen that one coming. This is, honestly, I, I think this is like kind of a nice improvement, right? I think this is a really, really good way to show the biome because they're very densely packed. They're so densely packed that they look like blocks. Wow, look how much I just improved the bamboo jungle you can take this idea, Mojang, because it's clearly such a good one, but uh, more seriously than whatever this is. I think it's important to acknowledge just how beautiful of a block the chiseled bookshelf is. I mean, sure, it's really nice when you fill it with books, etc., but it's also just a really nice looking block by itself. I think from the side, it looks pretty fine with this texture with no books in there, but from the top, it just has this really nice uh, tileable texture that I think could work really well, especially if we replaced, say, every block in a biome with it. I mean, how can you argue this isn't a massive improvement? I mean, you know, the decaying trees in the background definitely are killing the vibe a little bit, but there's just something so nice about tiled, chiseled bookshelves that just works so well as a floor texture that can also go in other places. It, it kind of works as a wall, right? Uh, but here's the thing, and it's not just limited to beaches because take a basalt delta biome. It's filled with this block, which is basically a chiseled bookshelf anyway. I mean, the two textures look basically identical. You can barely spot them apart, but just for your uh, reference, on the left there, that's basalt delta, and on the right is a chiseled bookshelf. And now, if we do the slight transformation, you'll see how it looks mostly the same, except it's just the tiniest bit prettier now. Also, apparently a tiny bit more flammable, but that's not a big deal. I think this is the much better way uh, for a base. Yeah, honestly, there was a lighting problem there before, right? And I think putting the chiseled bookshelves right next to the lava is just a really good idea so that there'll always be a light source when going through this otherwise very dull and drab biome. Seriously, our, our base old delta is darker on Java. I, I'm recording this video there, and I've just noticed it's very, very odd and dark. Speaking of things that are odd and dark, the Never Fortress. I mean, it's got such a dark texture that you can't really see the shadows and everything else on it. It just looks like a big dark blob on your screen. Tell me if you disagree, and you know what could make it better? Something which is vastly improved if the entire thing was to act as a giant chisel bookshelf. And then think about it, all of the piglins and the wither skeletons would have somewhere to store their knowledge, and they'd get smarter, which is super important. I'd also say if we were gonna do this, it'd be important to replace all of the 
Why, why can't I place a block there? But it'd be important if we were going to do this to replace the fences, maybe with some bamboo. I think it's just a, a slightly nicer look. What do you think? Uh, but yeah, obviously, this is a bit ridiculous. But the chisel bookshelf is wonderful for all sorts of things. Because you can also tile bookshelves together. This means you can make patterns where, for instance, you have like, I don't know, a big zero that goes across two multiple bookshelves. Wow, isn't that nice to see? Look, it looks like something, right? Is it a key? Yeah, that's what this is. This is a key. That's what I was trying to make this whole time. Look how well I made it. But um, yeah, as well as making a key on some bookshelves or a giant O, I guess this is like an O with a small O next to it. You could also take a giant canvas <laughs> like this one here and you could plan around that, for example. Obviously, this is the best use for that canvas. <laughs> it's a face. It's a big old face that looks at you. Okay, maybe maybe we should try that again, huh? You know what? I don't think I know how to make faces. It takes quite a lot of doing, and you can imagine in survival quite a lot of scaffolds, uh, but yeah, you can make art on a brand new scale now, and I love this sort of weird creativity that maybe shouldn't exist in some ways, but yet is beautiful that it does. In fact, if you wanted to, you could even frame that face. Yep, that is definitely what this needed to be saved. I have uh, made this a beautiful work of art. And uh, honestly, yeah, it's amazing the new options you have and how poorly you can choose to use them if you want. I mean, uh, you know, it's not exactly writing Toy Cat is yes in them or anything, but it is proof that no one can tell you what you can and cannot do. They didn't want you to make a giant red face, probably. So signs are filled with all sorts of creativity in the sense that you can write things on those signs if you want. Those things can be very polite or they can be very not polite. I mean, you you can be the master of your own destiny, but something cool you might not know that you can do is you can chain these signs together. You can make a long series of signs, all of which list, I don't know, your favorite aquatic animals, for example. I mean, I like dolphins personally, but you can write all of your favorite animals on signs. And then also because they all hang from the same post, this post isn't just like theoretical, it actually exists in Minecraft itself. Wow, isn't that cool? You know what I think you could do of this? That's right, it's a hanging tightrope. This is a new, very thin way to get between places, which is pretty fun by itself, I would say. But you can also use this to change direction and make it basically any cardinal way. I, I just think this is really great. And yeah, you can crouch pretty far over the edge of this. Is it a good idea? No, but should you do it anyway? You better believe uh, that's the whole point of this channel. And uh, yeah, I think this is something that's really cool by itself. But the thing that really inspired me was the brand new biome command uh, that came out in the latest snapshot. So now we have the ability to fill in biomes. Uh, it means that I could plant these same five oak trees and they all were in the same biome when I plant them and then change the biome later on to be a savanna, to be a snowy, to be a nether biome even. You can tell from what's happening here. However, I had a very key question, which is if we can change biome, Obviously, that affects weather, but what else can we affect with that? One of the first questions you might have is, wait, so if we can change biomes in the nether, does that mean water can officially be placed there? And the easiest way to uh, test this is, obviously, to go straight to the nether and find out. So you can see very clearly we're in a crimson forest. We've got these fun red particles everywhere, and now we're going to use this command to make a big area into snowy slopes. I mean, it's really hard to tell because the red particles are still here. Honestly, you know, is, is it working correctly? Are we outside of the snowy slopes yet? Do you see any? Okay, there we go. You can see all those red particles have faded away because we're in a snowy slopes biome as far as the game is concerned. However, will the water bucket now work? The answer is no. Because as it turns out, the thing that determines where you can place your water bucket is not the never biome, but instead the never dimension. It doesn't matter what dimension you put in here. However, just for fun, you know, just for the scientific method, if we were to go all the way above the nether, which, as you know, we're playing on Java Edition, that's a thing we're allowed to do. If we were on Bedrock, that would be a bug and not something they want to add to the game. But because we're playing Java, it's totally cool. So we do the exact same thing, but up here, right? So this whole biome is now snowy slopes. Can we set the weather to rain here? 
And will we get snow in the nether? I, that's all I need to know. Uh, weather, uh, rain, rain is snow in the... Okay, so as it turns out, there is never any weather in the nether, which is beautiful when you say it that way, but also kind of sad. Also, uh, can we place uh, water with the set block command? That's an interesting question. The answer is yeah. Today I learned you can have water in the nether if you really want to. You can have a big old cube of it, and then you can just keep it in using some red concrete. Man, what a versatile block this is. Isn't that wonderful? Um, is there a good need to do this? Let's be honest, there isn't. But if you want to make something cool in a really strange place, you want to make a Minecraft build or a world in somewhere strange, this is a great place to do it. Also, the biome does affect this background glare. You can see it's going from white to red to white again. You could do something cool with that, I'm sure. I just don't know what that would be. So what happens if we take this and we make it into the end dimension? Is other are other are colors different for that? Is it purple as a result now? It is, I guess mo- Ah, Minecraft has programmed different never colors, even for biomes that should never exist here. Today we learned. Honestly, the primary purpose of this seems to be weather, these weird effects that you get in certain biomes, primarily the never ones, because doesn't this just look different? It feels a little bit spookier, and also mob spawning, because if we go a little bit out from here, uh, then the base halt delta, which is just so strange by the way, the, the way these biomes work, um, the basalt delta will allow us to have magma cubes spawning in the overworld. Because I mean, if we're having slime spawn here all the time, why not fill it with magma cubes anyway? So yeah, that's something fun that you can see from a surprising distance too. And uh, indeed, this whole video has been a lot of fun. Minecraft truly is adding new ways to be creative. And I'm gonna be honest, it's exposed my, my uh, lack <laughs> in that field. But I hope you found this video interesting anyway because if you didn't, then you watched it and that was probably a poor decision. But I hope you enjoyed. I'm just a pig anime girl wearing a pig hat and I look forward to seeing you next time when I won't be. Because it is a fairly hard thing to get, right? <laughs>